we don't have a great high tech setup in here, which is one of the reasons why we put something on the smaller screen. So I have to go back to the basics. That slideshow, the basis of that is the pictures of the yearbooks from the 70s. If you haven't had a chance to see it, please have a chance to stop in. We can't do pictures, but what we can do is to talk about some of the things that are written in yearbooks, particularly mine. So that's why I brought my yearbook. Now let me start off, now I just want you to know too, we're not going to embarrass anybody if your name is called, then don't be worried that you wrote something strange. But let me just start off with uh, one writing. Here we go. I love you. I want you. I need you. Oh wait, sorry, that wasn't... That was just a note I wrote for some. One of the things that we know when we look at the yearbooks is that there is a difference between the things that women write and men write. One of the reasons is that women are somewhat more intuitive. When people write in your yearbook, you'll notice if you go back and take a look at your own, that people write and talk to you about things that are going to happen, mostly in the short term. See you at the prom, see you at graduation, see you over the summer, see you at school in the fall. Not many people write about future events, though, but there was one person, Karen Costa, who wrote to me and said, Tim, hope to see you at the reunions. The only person who had a little bit of intuition and forward thinking, of course it had to be a woman. Guys don't necessarily write the same way. I have a note from Rich McFarland. Rich, you're here from Florida. Thank you, Rich. He said, Tim, I'm so sorry I had an opportunity to write in your yearbook yet. As you know, I'm a very busy guy. Lie. Now, as you know, that's how kids talk even then and back now. You say something and then you say not or lie after it, and it negates the whole thing. And now I'm told there's a new word for not or lie. It's called Hank. Has anybody ever heard that, Hank? All right, let's bring it forward then. We have a newest member of the committee, Tim Gunther. And up until that time, if you saw the ladies who stood up before, you'll see that they were then and are still now knockouts. And for the past five years, at least for reunion purposes, I've had them to myself. In walks Tim Gunther. And one of the first things I try to do is hold a meeting at a spot where he won't make it. <laughs> so the first meeting is down in White Plains, and he shows up anyway. <laughs> and he gets a look at the women around the table, and his jaw drops. And then the next thing you know, Tim wants to meet on a weekly basis. <laughs> and he starts sending emails around to everyone, self-deprecating, witty, some of you have seen these, right? He ingratiates himself, he starts working night and day on things. These women are so st struck with him that they start writing back to him things like, Tim G, you rock. <laughs> and they write it in capital letters. So I can only say about Tim G the following, which brings it back to Rich's message. I am so glad that Tim Gunther joined the reunion committee. Not lie, Hank. <laughs> Don't sit on anybody's lap. Now, the next thing we know from women that write in the yearbooks is that they end up explaining or apologizing things that don't need explaining. It's like Oprah in your yearbook. Lynn Geis, Pisano, you're here, all the way from Calgary. She wrote in my yearbook, 
So sorry, Tim, I was a little bit weird in Mr. Pell's class. Does anybody remember Mr. Pell? Right? If you ever saw on TV or in movies where there's a substitute teacher that comes into the class, and as soon as the substitute teacher turns their back, every item in the room, not bolted down, becomes airborne. Every single day. So why you would have to apologize for that, I'm not sure. On the other hand, we have another guy, Bob Weil. Bob, you here? All the way from California. He wrote in my yearbook, remember chemistry, ick, Eight, eight. <laughs> Who would write chemical formulas in Europe? <laughs> what is it? Eight, eight. But you think about it, though, it came to pass when I was thinking, Bob is now a very successful record executive in the music industry out west. And it makes sense, Bob, when you think about it, that you have to know the chemical composition and formulas of all the illegal substances ingested by your rap stars, your rock stars. So that does kind of make sense. And I'm glad that you brought that home for me. I eat. Eight. Please. And the last thing I'll talk about is the fact that guys, unlike women, don't have to apologize for anything. And as a matter of fact, they don't say anything. But they talk about events that are equally insignificant. Just like the old Chris Farley routine, if you remember, when he would interview people on Saturday Night Live and be a famous movie star, rock star or something, and he'd ask them obvious questions. Paul McCartney, you remember being in the Beatles? Something like that. That's the things that guys write in your yearbook. I have a ton of these. Hey Tim, do you remember the time when we played basketball? <laughs> And remember we went to the Villa Roma, and we got wasted? I was so wasted! So, the good thing, and this brings it all home, is that the conversations that the guys were having outside in the cocktail hour haven't changed. 30 years later, they're still talking about the same thing. So I'm just gonna leave you all with a thought. Thank you. We do have a faculty member here tonight, Mr. Roof. Just wanted to say hello to him. Are you still here? Thank you for coming. I know Bill Green was also here earlier. I don't know if there are any other faculty members. But just a reminder, go back, check in the photographer. Enjoy the Ed Hurley band. The food will be, uh, dessert will be coming out later. And thank you all for coming. We'll see you in five years. Thank you. And a last announcement is that there is, I guess, some alumni from St. Columba. They're going to take a picture right now in the back, so get a head start if you want to go back there. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you in five years. <laughs> Thank you.